today. Um, I will do a little introduction here of why is Siemens, Amberg, and Elko doing such a webinar together? I think that's a, a good question, maybe for you. Uh, why we are doing this, and I can tell you it's the reason is our tunnel digitalization center, and there we want to have a look uh, to our brand new video here. This is what I want to, I want to present you in some seconds here. Then Yannick from Elku will go into detail about the planning and construction of the sliding doors. So it's a very interesting topic here. I want to welcome also Yannick here in the call. And then we will have a look to the digital twin in operations. This will be held by Veronica. Also a warm welcome here from Amberg Group. And uh, last but not least, service and maintenance will be also presented by Yannick. He will tell us something about how the condition data of the doors are coming uh, from, from, the, from the door open and closing system into the cloud. And I will add there also something. So, um, but he, we are working here closely together. So it's always a joint collaboration here. And that's why we are also here together in this session. And then finally, we'll have time also for your, for your questions. And after every presentation, there will be also the chance to raise those questions. All right, good. So I hope that now it's possible that everybody can hear me because now I want to start the video. So there you have an extra layer where you can see um, the, the um, what normally where the slides are. You can see there also the video. Hopefully it, it's working. So let's try this. It's, uh, it's a first try here with the video. So I will start the video now and hope this works. So have fun with our trailer of the Tunnel Digitalization Center and we, I will start it now. Okay, so we will stream now and it depends on the bandwidth and there's a little delay inside, but hopefully the rest is working fine. So. Hope that worked. Hope uh, that everybody could see my screen. And uh, yes, this was the the introduction here um, of our tunnel digitalization center. I will go into detail after that uh, little introduction here. But before we start, it's in, in, interesting to know who is in the call here and who is doing the presentation. All right. First of all, we have um, Amberg, the Amberg Group here with Veronica as, as a product manager here. I think it's a many, many of, of you maybe know this company. They are based in Switzerland. They are in the market for many, many years. Uh, more, more than 800 projects are successfully done in the last 50 years. So it's a family owned company and they have around 380 employees. So a very experienced company here. And, uh, they, and she will do also the presentation here for the digital twin. Also in the line here, it's uh, Siemens, um, that's me. So uh, we are a company which, is, which was founded in 1847, so a long time ago. We have around 380,000 employees and we are uh, focused strongly on the design simulation, engineering software, and also known automation and cloud solutions like the Simatic PLCs, WinCC, HMI, Mindsphere, and all those topics are coming from Siemens in this case, all right? And last but not least, we have Yannick here. He's in the business development and uh, Echo Group is based in Liechtenstein, was founded 1949. So also uh, our experienced company here. They have also around 380 employees 
and there are the supplier here for many many door elements and uh, we have also in the tunnel digitalization center a proof point for uh, for such a sliding emergency door so that's for your information who is doing what all right so and uh, then the next the next slide here um, i want to open hope um, i go now to the presentation mode um, this is the picture of our Hagerbach uh, digitalization center in Switzerland. So there was also the reason why we showed you um, the trailer here. So this is a, yeah, a special corridor in, in Switzerland where we have a tunnel area to show our technique, to show our competence to our customers. So the tunnel digitalization center offers you a unique opportunity to experience the interaction between the digital and the real world. So what does that mean? We are showing their real showcases like the emergency door, what you can see there on the picture on the right, and the connection between the digitalization. So we have their digitalization center where you can control the entire, uh, yeah, the entire technique of this door here. We can do also predictive analytics. We can simulate everything in the real world. So all those things are coming together in the Tunnel Digitalization Center. And therefore, it makes sense to work with many uh, other companies to show the, the real value add and the competence which we have. Yeah. So, and the good thing here is that we can show also new technologies and concepts on a very early stage in day will be presented live. This is no PowerPoint and so on. This is the real environment of a tunnel. And we are showing in our presentation everything about this topic and, and, and bring that to life and make the understanding much easier than watching only a video in this case, right? So, and we have here different station, uh, stations of the, the path of, of digitalization of a tunnel system but this is what I want to show you on the next slide. But here on the bottom, you can see all partners of this, um, of this tunnel uh, digitalization center. New, newly has joined TLT Turbo, which is also a, a fan supplier here, so that we can show here the interaction between the digital twin of fan systems and also condition data with the virtual world. So this is here also our latest newcomer here. All right, so some impressions, what you, what you can see there or what you can expect there in the Tunnel Digitalization Center. So there are some, some impressions from the opening event. So this was a huge event for our customers and also from our, uh, from our involved companies here. So there you can see the Tunnel Digitalization Center wall. Yeah, so it's uh, divided into different sections. I will tell you later. What's the reason behind that? And there you can see also the entrance of the Hagerbach. It's, uh, it's in Flums in Switzerland. And here you can see the real uh, tunnel emergency door. And on the left side also um, a, a, a cabinet where all the technic of this entire tunnel is uh, built in. Yeah. So, but what does that mean exactly now with these different centers? Therefore, it makes sense to have a look what is the typical life cycle of a tunnel yeah so and we are in uh, from from all companies we are addressing our entire life cycle to different customer groups they could be operators they could be planners in system integrators and end customers of tunnels and these are our focus groups and everybody has some interest in in this case the end customer wants to have a very uh, fast opening of the tunnel. The system integrator wants to have a very good usability of the products and the planner, they want to have yeah, a very smooth and, and easy uh, integration of all those components and the entire process. So, and these target groups are really highly um, yeah, invited to our tool, uh, Tunnel Digitalization Center. But coming back to the reason why we split this up into those concepts here. So just imagine you want to build up or create a tunnel. So first of all, 
you started with the analysis of the stone, of the material of this tunnel and so on. And these steps are normally in, in our use cases supported by Amber technologies. They're scanning uh, everything from the, tunnel, uh, from the tunnel part and putting all those information into a, a cloud, into a point cloud, so that we can do here the next step. This is not in deep in detail, uh, not very precise, but it gives you a rough overview what is done in this step here. So when we created, first of all, the 3D model here, now we can enrich those data also with building information modeling so that you can have deep details of the entire tunnel system so that you can see also which suppliers we have for the stone material, for, for the cement, for the fans and so on. So all those relevant information is now uh, enriched or added to the 3D model. So everything, and this is known in, in, in your area also, is created in the virtual world. And therefore, we have also different tools, 3D tools, like from Siemens or like from Amberg or whoever, it, uh, I, want, I don't want to highlight one, but everything is here done in the tunnel design phase in the 3D world, all right? So, and when we are really sure, when we presented everything to our customer that he is really happy, so then we can do the next step. We can do the virtual commissioning phase. And this is where Siemens normally is very uh, strong. So we can simulate so many things um, so that we are really, really sure that everything is working later on when we build it up in the real tunnel. So you can simulate, for example, the fan operation. You can simulate the WinCC, which is the control software of the entire tunnel. You can do simulations of the controllers and so on, so that everything is working properly and no life is, is in danger. And so this is the most important thing. And uh, you can also um, have a look to cybersecurity concept, concepts on a very early stage. And this is all that what you can do here in the commissioning phase. After that, that you're really sure, okay, your code, your virtual code is now fine and, and safe, then you can go to the engineering phase. In the engineering phase, um, okay, this is more the perspective from Siemens in this case, but anyhow, we can do the, the real programming of the, the PLCs, of the HMI panels and so on for the tunnel. And after that, everything is engineered, you can open the tunnel in this case. So, and after that, you have, we have also from, from Amber, from Elkuch and from Siemens, the possibility to host those data into a cloud, but only data hosting is not very intelligent, I think. It might make sense to have a value add. And the value add here is that we can gather those condition data from, from example, from doors or from the venti ventilation system into a cloud system and have a closer look to those curves and, and detect anom anomalies on a very early stage. And this brings you value add. This is what we understand under service and modernization. So this is the entire path of digitalization from the concept to the real tunnel opening and also the services. And why I explained this uh, so deeply to you, um, this is very close connected to our tunnel digitalization center. And if you have a look later to, to, the, to the picture, what, what I will show you on the next slide, then you can recognize or, or you have those same look and feel. And, uh, and this uh, center is also made from the idea to the final opening. So the, exactly the same way uh, what I presented you here on the tool digitalization path. So we decided to uh, present this when a customer is coming to the tool, tool to tunnel digitalization center. We are talking strongly about the BIM center, so building information modeling center. So there you can see the point cloud, which is here on the left side uh, from, uh, from the Hagerbach tunnel system here. You can see virtually the doors. Uh, you can check everything here. And uh, this is the BIM center, then we have the control and training center, there we are talking about the operators training on a very early stage, and this is all virtually, this is not real. This is, everything is made in the virtual world, all right? So training center, control and training center here, simulation, everything is there done in this area, and then comes the real simulation center 
where you can add those data to our partner ring company, HBI, uh, which is a ventilation software uh, company. And uh, But I will tell you later what is the reason behind here. This is the simulation center. And last but not least, we have the cloud center where you can have directly access, for example, to the tunnel emergency door and get those real data via MindSphere to your yeah, computer, to your screen, right? So this is the overall story uh, why we are showing this here to you. And this is a picture from, from the uh, Tunnel Digitalization Center. And there's exactly the same wording and look and feel on those screens here. And there, normally we are doing live presentations, but as you know, Corona virus and so on um, uh, is, is complicated in this case to invite people or larger groups from outside of Germany or Switzerland to, to this area. So we have, to, we have to be patient in this case, but we are, are really looking forward to welcome you in those special unique area. And here's some further, um, further yeah, impressions from our tunnel center. They can see on the right side here, it's the, the door, which is uh, made here from, from Elkuch and uh, all those benefits about those systems. And this is our next presentation here in this case, uh, which will be explained from Yannick. What are the real benefits of those sliding door elements and, and so on? This will be now presented by Yannick. Okay, so this is the introduction. I make a little summarization. The Tunnel Digitalization Center is the connection between the virtual world and the real world. We can show you there exactly how our behavior models, how our software, how our hardware is working together in those unique environment. And you can see there in a real infrastructure, how this works and co is connected together. Yeah. So, and therefore we think that makes this life for you as a customer and customer or integrator much easier to understand new topics for the tunnel construction. And therefore, we have those tunnel digitalization center. Okay, good. Then um, um, we will go to Yannick and he will tell us more about planning and construction. And therefore, I'm handing over now to Yannick. I hope um, you can now share your screen, please. And we are looking forward to your presentation, Yannick. Can you please take mm -hmm. over? Thank you, Thomas, for the introduction. I will just uh, take over the screen real quick. One moment. Good. Um, it doesn't work right now. Okay. Um, you have to click on the play button and there. Yeah, I, I can't click on the play button right now. Okay, okay. Then we have to to yeah be spontaneous. <laughs> that is okay. always the same with, with the technique. Then I'm trying to trying to open um this presentation from my computer or it, it's not working, right? No, 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 it's not. Uh, okay, that's not good, but it happens. That's dead. Okay. Um, Susan is is uh, that doesn't matter. I, we, we will figure out. So Yannick, I'm I'm trying to to pick the presentation. Please do a little introduction from your side and what Elko is doing. So to 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 pass this until I'm ready. Okay, one minute. Yeah, for, yeah of course. Okay. <laughs> All right. Cool. Yeah. Uh, as already mentioned, we from the Elko Group uh, Division Door Systems are active in planning, design, manufacture installation and maintenance of the tunnel doors and gates and the main reason why we are developing in digital in digitalization are firstly the increased safety and secondly the cost reduction the safety and the quality of escape routes demanded is uh, the highest priority for us in the course of this webinar you will learn how we can save costs with digitalization from planning up to the maintenance. Yeah, we expected digitalization to become the future of tunnel construction. 
It will provide supporting digital services from the design stage to the construction phase to the operating and ongoing maintenance of the tunnel. All right, now we have my Can slide. you see the screen? Yeah. Thank you, Thomas. Okay, cool. Ooh. Yeah. So then it's yours. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So um, uh, can you click once again, please? So yeah, perfect. Uh, here we see again uh, the simulation center in Hagerbach. Thomas already told you uh, a lot about this, so I will just go over this real quick. But uh, the, develop, the development on our part is taking place also in this uh, simulation center in Hagerbach. So yeah, also, as already mentioned, uh, a section of the tunnel has been built there, which is being monitored digitally with the monitors you can see right here on this picture. Mm. And yeah, the big benefit that we already heard we have is that in Hagerbach we can we have the possibility to test the application under the real conditions. So we can simulate various situations and evaluate the data obtained from them. From this, we can also see the average values and define from when a value is considered a deviation. I will go into this more detailed in the second part, the service and maintenance part. But first, we, we will proceed as in a tunnel project and start with the planning phase. So the digital twin enables us to determine cross cuts, cross cuts, to recognize the length of the cross cuts in advance, and to configure the doors for cross cuts accordingly. Should we go to the next slide? Is it okay? No. Yeah, you can leave it. It's okay. I, I, I'll tell you. <laughs> okay. Sorry. So, uh, Good. Yeah. No problem. So since the exact location, as well as the distance to the passing train, and thus also the acting pressures can be defined in the digital twin, we can adapt the doors individually to the tunnel and optimize the planning. So these findings allow the interfaces to be checked and the technical requirements to be described in detail during the selection process for the supplier. Please have one more click. Thomas, thank you. So this, this procedure allows the supplier to be involved in the project at an early stage and can respond to and take into account the situations on site. Next slide, please. So another advantage, advantage for us is that you can see in advance what problems may arise during the construction phase. This is where we come from the digital world to the real world, be it lack of space, various installation situations, or accessibility to the installation site. These insights during the planning phase help to determine the most accurate price possible when submitting a quotation. So in day-to-day -day business, we repeatedly encounter the difficulty that we do not know the situation of the, of the tunnel and therefore are unable to submit an offer specifically adapted to the tunnel. Furthermore, at an early stage, it is sometimes not possible to see where the doors will be installed, where the electrical connections will be and where the earthing will be connected. In the end, this results in additional work and makes it more difficult to determine the price in advance. Yeah, as, as shown in the picture, precise information from the digital twin helps us to optimize the pricing for production, for the transport and for, for the assembly and yeah, for the whole uh, tunnel logistic. And Right here we see the cross-cut element and the goal here is the delivery of a fully assembled and tested system. A large part of the work, the assembly and testing of the door can be done outside the tunnel. This ensures a short installation and commissioning time inside the tunnel. But the big condition for these systems, however, is a good planning in advance since the size of the sliding model means that accessibility must be Guaranteed. Next slide, please. Thank you. 
Now we are coming from the planning phase to the construction phase. Here we see some challenges that we encounter again and again in tunnel projects and the solutions that we can develop through the digitalization. So yeah, the waiting times to coordination problems, overview of the project status, identification of elements in tunnels. Yet yeah, those, those are the challenges that we uh, nowadays uh, have in the tunnel projects. Yeah, we can look back on several projects where this approach would have been a great advantage. Especially in large projects should, such as uh, Lutzberg, Gotthard and Chenery, the digital twin with its digitization could have saved considerable co costs and time. In retrospect, the time and effort involved in building the individual objects would have been considerably less. In some cases, due to the size of the projects and the long duration and to the changing personnel, the overview of the entire situation is missing. Maybe uh, you as a tunnel construction know that. And if the system is digi it digitalized, it's possible to go into the individual door system from the office and check the installation site in advance. Due to the complex Due to the complex work process and the high personal expenditure, the situation is not always clear, neither for the supplier or for the project management. A further advantage in the construction phase is the allocation of the doors and the associated improved tunnel logistic. Since all door elements are provided with a QR code, our installation team can quickly identify where each element is installed as soon as the tunnel is entered. Confusion about uh, where the doors have to be placed as we experienced during the construction phase of some finished project is uh, avoided with that. In, in just uh, to make an example, we had the situation that one door was transported to the wrong cross passage by the tunnel logistic and the error was only uh, detected when the features wanted to start the assembly and you uh, you can imagine the, the the more costs that you have through this yeah in in case of problems or adjustment work a visit on site is not necessarily required in some cases Problems can be discussed directly via the digital twin. Uh, then the next slide, please, Thomas. Okay, so the, the advantages for customer and su supplier in summary. From our side, we are able to do a more precise price determination and cost overview. We can do a better planning and coordination of the works. We can optimize our installation processes by uh, knowing the exact inst uh, yeah, installation site in the tunnel, and we expect to have less downtime. Okay, are there already any questions till now? All right, so thank you for your insights. Um, now, uh, as proposed, you are uh, in the line and now, um, able to ask us questions so the line is now open um, i hope you are familiar with the tool there is a box which says questions or fragen and there you can type in those questions and they will will be uh, raised up here and i can see that and ask yannick for details so please use that opportunity um, if everything is clear this is also fine for us but maybe there are some questions about this topic which was presented here. So, okay, nobody at the moment. Hmm. Oh yeah, the, the first question is coming. I will read this uh, for you, Yannick, okay? Yeah. Does Elkur provide the digital objects for their solutions? Does Elkur provide the digital objects? you mean 3d objects or i don't know exactly what what he meant or do you ah, know what what he, he meant 
the, the BIM. He, he just, um, thank, yeah, thank you for the question. BIM, yes, uh, okay. But also for the BIM. Um, uh, no, we work here with uh, Siemens and Amberg. Uh, and they uh, provide all the digital uh, objects, so the the whole three D and the BIM. Yes, and uh, he said also three D sim. Okay, then, but, but the the question is answered. Yes, uh, that's also the reason why we have those tunnel digitalization center. We are working here closely together. We are hosting those data in our three D system. That could be a, a Siemens solution or it could be a third party solution, it doesn't matter. We are we are open and I can import those data into our system and that's also value add here, uh, what I want to point out. Okay, is there another question from the audience? So we will have time, This, as I said, this uh, webinar is made for you. Uh, it, otherwise, there are no other questions. I see. No other questions. Okay, then if there are no questions, it's also fine. Um, so thank you very much. Um, um, yes, thank you very much for your presentation, Yannick. And uh, and on the list is now that we are want to hear more about Amberg. Um, as I as I did this in the introduction. They are a specialist for, for the tunnel construction here. And we have our speaker here, Veronica, and she will tell us more about the digital twin in operation. And this is a very exciting topic. How how she she's doing that, she will let us know in her presentation. Okay, therefore I switch, I am shutting down my, my uh, presentation here. Uh, Veronica, can you hear us and uh, can you please share your screen? Is that possible? Yeah, thank you uh, very much, Thomas. Okay, uh, now it's your turn. I hear you, but I have, I'm afraid, a very similar problem that Yannick had. Ah, yes, no, it's working. It seems like working. Do you it's see my working, screen? Yes. yes, the digital Perfect. tool is there. I'm very happy. <laughs> So probably you already asked yourself a question, uh, why operation from the whole life cycle is so important that I picked it out for, uh, for a deep dive. And uh, first of all, I would like to say that in the moment of the commission, a tunnel uh, um, infrastructure uh, construction uh, becomes uh, more than uh, just itself it becomes a part of an important uh, transport axis of a city or of a country itself. So the digital twin is going to be part of a digital ecosystem. The era of uh, smart cities has already been started. Uh, cloud solutions, smart maps and uh, continuous access to live information has become uh, part of our everyday life. Uh, you just want to know uh, how to get from A to B uh, the fastest possible uh, way and you want updated information if there is a disturbance uh, on your way, such as a closed tunnel. In the mobility rush, you just don't want to uh, sit in traffic jams because of uh, closed tunnels. If you take a look on this picture, you obviously realize that uh, there is no space or not a lot of space for new constructions. Uh, underground, um, even though uh, there are still many great possibilities for the use of underground space, uh, there are very complex infrastructure systems underground already existing. So if we want to enjoy the whole benefits of a smart city from digital ecosystems, we need to be able to modeling this. So our infrastructures, roads, canalizations, and tunnels and uh, metro systems are already existing mainly. So that's why SBIRD modeling and retrofitting um, 
are a must if uh, we want to profit of the digitalization. And we want to profit of the digitalization uh, because uh, we have to optimize our processes. If you take a look at uh, of this picture, you see the different phases of the life cycle of underground structures from strategic planning to operation. And it seems like as operation would be only one station among uh, this, uh, uh, six phases. Uh, but let's consider the fact that uh, we, con uh, we uh, construct for 100 years so operation is proportionally much longer than the planning and the construction phases. And uh, not only time is money, but maintenance is also money. Uh, so if you see on the repartition of the cost during the life cycle of tunnels, it's almost 80% just operation and maintenance. And uh, if you think of the fact that we are playing with tax money, so on the other, uh, on the other way uh, said, with our own money when we are planning uh, maintenance actions, uh, then you realize the importance of optimizing uh, the processes uh, to the maximum. What is needed for uh, better processes? We need to take fast and right decisions. And for fast and right decisions, we need to have the relevant information in the right moment. And that's how we, uh, we can get to the main importance of using uh, digital twins. Uh, because a digital twin and its ecosystem could give access to integrated data, allowing valuable, accurate and up-to-date insights and making information visible and more understandable. So the Amber Group has already uh, more than 50 BIM and digitalization references uh, all over the world. So based on this knowledge, I would like to share our concept uh, of um, digital twin for operation with you. Digital twins uh, have to be obviously capable of um, collecting the information from the whole life cycle. Uh, but what, what's very important that it has to reunite all the specific models it has to integrate real-time information from sensors and uh, all kinds of updates. And the connection to data banks and clouds is uh, a must. That makes our digital twin alive. Let's mention some uh, specific features of underground construction that are not that obvious compared to uh, high-rate building uh, planning. Uh, underground structures are built in and with a special material, the ground, which is uh, seldom completely known. Uh, these are uh, sometimes very long linear structures with uh, complex uh, geometries and uh, our models have to reflect this durability. That's why we want to have uh, digital three-dimensional georeference models that ensures machine readability. That happens via standardized interfaces and formats uh, to collect all the specific informations. So what are the main challenges or what are our most important pains by uh, planning, maintenance, or, or ensure the good operation of a tunnel. Uh, I have been working a lot in uh, maintenance of tunnels, so I know exactly that um, the maintenance action has to be planned during operation. operation. The cause of that is that uh, closing a tunnel is very 
uh, expensive. And alternative traffic ways without using the tunnel are very complicated to organize. So that's why we have to optimize the logistic to the to the maximum, to the best possible, uh, to guarantee the shortest intervention time. And for that, the right information again is uh, very important. During my uh, whole experiences, we always had a lot of problems with missing or lost data. With one of my uh, last projects, uh, when we wanted to have some more information about the construction itself, we find out that uh, the files were in an archive that burned down uh, 30 years ago. Um, so even if they exist, and even if they exist in a digital format, uh, the data structure is always complicated and not clear. It has to be changed. Um, the owner panes uh, are more, uh, in most of the cases, uh, portfolio and uh, asset management problems because of the same reason. Normally, the long-term management of large dynamic data volumes or live data volumes, it's not resolved. The modeler's uh, biggest pain uh, when doing as-built modeling is that uh, all structures uh, are normally very, very geometrically very irregular. And the user's pain is that uh, we don't want those disturbances and traffic jams because of uh, construction site. So what we do and how we resolve these pains uh, is that we, we create a central model, a digital twin with all the relevant information as the digital documentation of the tunnel. Uh, that is the three dimensional presentation of the structure that enables simple and intuitive acquisition of uh, information. And that happens with uh, linked uh, data via standardized interfaces. And we resolve the modeling issues with automatic or semi-automatic edge detection that recognizes the elements uh, in the tunnel. So let's go back to the beginning. How do we create or as be as beard models. Uh, one of the most important uh, input for that is a is a scan, uh, laser scanning, uh, all the documentation obviously that we can find from the constructions, uh, 2D plans, descriptions, photos, and there are uh, invasive and non-invasive in guess investigations method like ground penetration models, ultrasonic echo, and so on. On this video, you can see how we uh, get from a point cloud uh, given from a laser scanning uh, to a mesh that gives us the surface of uh, the inside of the tunnel. Uh, that we use to uh, create elements. Luckily, some uh, repetitive uh, elements can be still done even by SBIRD modeling uh, parametrically. Uh, that is a smart uh, copy paste uh, that uh, understands the dependencies among the elements. It's very important that our digital twin is integrated in its uh, context. It means uh, that uh, we also make geology models and we integrate it into a GIS system on an interactive map with the digital terrain model. So you can see your structure in its surroundings.
but at least as important as the three-dimensional model itself uh, are the informations behind uh, for RetroBeam or SBIT model for operation. Very important metadata is uh, the inspection data, the surveying data, the convergence measures, uh, cleaners profile analysis, groundwater analysis, link to maintenance plans, uh, information about the railway or road installations, grayscale pictures, photo, photo documentations, and so on. There is also an option if you uh, model the elements behind the walls to see behind the walls. Uh, so if you want to uh, to take some intervention. Uh, it might be very useful if you see with the help of augmented reality uh, what's uh, behind the structure. Here you can see uh, a model with the superficy of the uh, model and on the other picture the, the rebar uh, elements or the rebarring in the structure. Something that even more interesting than that is, um, or at least in my opinion, uh, is the feeding of the digital twin with uh, real-time informations. Uh, if you can uh, have dashboards of your uh, sensor data in your uh, in your BIM model or in your digital twin, uh, that makes the acquiring of information very fast and very exact. Uh, on this uh, small picture, you can see a dashboard about um, the sensors uh, uh, belonging to the ventilators. As tunnel designers, we have uh, the focus on a sensoric related to the structure itself. From the Auenberg group, we provide uh, information from inclinometers, extensometers, piezometers, uh, vibrations, or um, crack meters, uh, and so on. Uh, for tunnel security, for from operation security or transport security, uh, Yannick and Thomas can tell a bit more later on. So what uh, what uh, we do with uh, all this information? So we would like to enjoy our three-dimensional model and sensory information too, uh, with knowing where we are, and um, and that's why we do dashboards with um, with GIS and BIM information in the middle and sensor information on the side. Uh, so we can we can integrate and interconnect our beam models and have the complete overview of all available information uh, and we can have all the data on one screen and integrate static and dynamic re real-time information at the same time so for us it's very important uh, to have information about the geometry, the metadata, geographic data in the form of open data formats and using opening uh, APIs so that the data can be used uh, very long and obviously it has to be adapted to the client's needs. I mentioned the inspect data for that uh, in order to get real-time information or very fast information we have a closed based uh, system solution uh, that works on the basis of laser scanning uh, there is a possibility to compare to compare the inspections uh, on each other so you can see the progress uh, of the damages. Uh, there are offline and online applications uh, of these features. 
and in order to detect these damages uh, we also use uh, artificial intelligence to um, for a semi-automatic uh, phenomena detection that makes us work much faster than before and uh, this tool is also uh, based on open APIs. So to wrap up the benefits of using uh, digital twins for operations, the main reason is a uh, safe cost and time uh, to avoid blocking periods with uh, just-in-time interventions because from all the sensor data uh, I have information uh, to predict if something's uh, going to have a def uh, defect so uh, I can I can uh, make an intervention when it's possible and it's not going to be a surprise uh, that ensures a trouble-free operation uh, of the tunnel. There is more transparency, the communication is facilitated. We can visualize static and dynamic information and uh, the digital tw twin can be interconnected to other ones and collect all the specific informations. So to summarize, the interdependencies uh, for everybody in the life cycle spanning countries, cities, government authorities, asset owners, building project participants, operators, standard setting bodies and uh, citizens are complex. The key to this interplay is standardization. Uh, as well as simplification. Better data management and uh, governance, integration of data based on standardization will enable a system of data-driven digital versions of the built asset industry uh, that will uh, unlock real value for everybody involved. So we are sure that uh, it comes to better outcomes for the whole society. So now I would like to give back the word for my colleagues. All right, Veronica, thank you very much. <laughs> so um, we have now some questions. Um, now it's also your time, the time for the questions. But before we, I address this to you, Veronica. Yannick, uh, there were some questions from your presentation. So okay. I will read this here. Um, for the ROI calculation, do you have any concrete figures on time savings? That means in the construction phase of the doors, I assume from, from Danielle. So can you say something? how much time you're saving from your experience. Is that possible, Yannick, or what, um, what do you think about it? Yeah, that's uh, very hard to say right now because uh, we we are still in uh, the developing stage of this whole project. So uh, I, unfortunately, I can't tell you right now how, how much time we really uh, mm. save during that yeah okay good so and the next question digital twin models can be seen and obtained as an optimization from the bin model right to the real operation phase does the bim and the digital twin relate some way from rio uh re sorry um maybe something for veronica so um the correlation between BIM models and 3D models and so on. Can you answer those questions? Is it clear what was the question, Veronica? Uh, you know? Yes, yes, more or less. Um, okay. I, it, Good. I, I guess uh, this is a question about the difference between just the BIM model and the digital twin. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's say that uh, we have a BIM model, we have open BIM, and we have uh, digital uh, twin. Uh, the BIM model can be also a specific BIM model. I don't know only for uh, 
for the door itself for only for one uh, specific uh, issue um, interconnected beam models are um, are a bit more than that they uh, communicate or they are they communicate with each other or they um, they are integrated together uh, by a digital twin it's very important that it describes the processes and the function of the construction that is imitating digitally okay so it has to be a uh, a very integrative uh, beam model that can be interconnected with uh, other digital tools too. Okay. Good. So I hope uh, the answer is is okay or clear. Otherwise, please let us know afterwards. And so yes, that, that is the, the real time information again that it's oh. always updated, mm -hmm. or there is a possibility for update. So there are uh, many questions for you, Veronica. So um, I will start I'm with the next one. <laughs> yeah. uh, also very happy that we have an interaction between our visitors because otherwise it makes no sense to do such a webinar, right? So Veronica, which BIM software is used from Marco? Uh, we have uh, uh, many ones. Okay, that's true. Because uh, <laughs> uh, because they have uh, different advantages. For example, for geology, we use Leapfrog. That's a genius software uh, to make uh, to summarize all the geological information, not just to to make a three-dimensional model, but to integrate all the um, all the geological surveyings and drillings and inclinometer data. So it can also be very nicely updated. Um, for parametric design and for repetitive elements, we use Revit so for the construction itself. Uh, for specific elements that are not very regular, we still uh, use Rhino. And for rebar, we used to uh, use Tecla structures. Um, that are just different advantages, uh, and we mm -hmm. integrate we integrate the whole very often in GIS softwares to have this overview. What I just uh, show you, for that we we use uh, Arc GIS. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So if if uh, Marco has but, a further but, question, uh, okay, can I, he can uh, contact. I have uh, one, one more sentence to this subject, but we have uh, a lot of um, company made plugins and scripts to optimize the special tunneling workflows in modeling. It's, it was something that we, we had to do because uh, if you are pioneering something, then you have to make things for yourself. <laughs> so let me know when you're finished. Sorry. not. To yes, now I'm finished. You. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> So there are uh, more questions. Uh, sensors used for us or US, I don't know exactly. Georadar measuring. Georadar measuring. Which sensors are used? I, I, I well, guess. Georadar is it's a big, it's a radar itself. So it's a, uh, it's not like one sensor uh, sending one signal or just measuring one specific. Uh, and number or change. Uh, the ground penetration radar, it really looks like a, a Röntgen picture of the of the soil or of the vault, where you can see if there is a, a change in the consistence of what's behind the surface. And there you can see if there is a or you can take the consequence that, that where you see the change, there is a change of material. So mm -hmm. you can take the consequences that there is a that the structure is changing at that point. So okay. for yes. 
So another question. So you are very famous. <laughs> a lot of questions to you. Which GNSS system error of position related to gear reference data? Also for Marco. Uh, we uh, normally we uh, we plan in the in the system of the given country. It's different for for each country. Mm -hmm. In Switzerland, sometimes we have uh, problems uh, from that because the system changed like 10 or 15 years ago and we have still some data in the old system and then you have to recognize at the real moment that it's still the still the it's still the, the old one otherwise you you get problems by the modeling mm -hmm. but for so that it's um it's a, it's a very good uh problem solving uh, tool if in a common data environment at the beginning of the modeling uh, each participant uh, makes something small and integrate into one model and then you see if everybody's at the same place and then same system okay so the last question then we go to the next topic from Yannick can this technology capture capture supports and their properties such as rock bolts locations, short read sickness, lattice girder locations, and rebar elements for as built documentation from DAX. Poo. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. uh, I don't know with which one to start, but um, I just um, heard the word uh, layer sickness and uh, bold locations we have uh, very nice uh, digital tools uh, for the construction phase two where we can uh, take this really V's uh, we make a scanning uh, at the tunnel phase so we can check uh, very quickly in real time uh, if uh, if the tunnel is already excavated enough and uh, with the same technique, we can also check the the first, second, and third uh, shotcrete uh, layer thickness if it's uh, correct or not. So uh, we can make corrections uh, at the same time when the the concrete is still fresh on the on the vault. Uh, we can also uh, make a localization of the bolts, obviously, uh, with the same method and put everything to a model. Okay, so... I don't know if I forgot something that was in the question. Okay. So the, tool, uh, tool, the tool's name is Unbag Navigator. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> All right. So no further question, but I see there there's a good... Ah, no, no, another one from Simon is coming. For an ex existing tunnel, can the scanning model reflect of all installed M and E equipment? Um, from a scanning model, we can only see what's on the surface. Um, so the most of the elements can be already identified on the grayscale picture itself, but it has to be uh, uh, rechecked. Not everything is obvious, but the most typical elements we can identify without going to uh, to the tunnel. It's also important that uh, while making the really we um, we know that we have to take attention to that and choose the the right scanning method for for this uh, option good so oh there are another question i think we are, we are answering now one more question and the rest will be in the q a session right so we have one for the presentation uh, good morning. Okay, do you use BIM as a methodology for project management and document uh, documental control as well? E.g., BIM 360 from Gabrielle. Um, do you for use project BIM management. As, okay, you know what I mean. Okay. Uh, they, yes. Uh, yes, we do uh, for project management, especially the ones with the. Um, with the option GIS integration. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you.
Veronica. Then we have one last, but uh, as I said, we, we will go on now with the next presentation. Oh, okay. Yannick. I hope, Yannick, uh, you are able now to share your screen. So l let us know uh, if this is working. Yannick, can you? Yeah, uh, no, it's uh, still, still the same problem as before. Okay, then I will share the screen of mine. I hope that will work. So some technical issues here in that case. Uh, wait a second, and I will. Uh, sometimes not easy. So my wait, so moderator. So my my share my screen. Okay. Can you see the screen? Yes, I think yeah, so. Right. Yeah. It's working. Perfect. All right. So then the last last presentation, and then time for your questions again. So let's go. Yeah, okay, so we are coming to the last topic for today, uh, service and maintenance. And yeah, that's uh, an important uh, topic for us because the digitalization of the tunnel will have a major impact on maintenance work during tunnel operation. So uh, we can already monitor relevant data from the door using the Siemens CEDO drive, which we install in our doors if uh, an opening force smaller than 100 Newton is required, uh, which is uh, yeah like a standard. So we already have the Siemens CEDO drive installed in nearly every of our doors. And other sensors of all kinds can be uh, can also be integrated. And uh, our, all these uh, sensors and drives are already installed in the door in Hagerbach. So this drive and the sensors send data to the control center where they can be evaluated. So we have uh, information about opening and closing of the door. This information is whether the doors are open or closed, whether they are currently in motion, or what action is currently being performed. Uh, right now, we already have 19 parameters of uh, that send data to the door. These parameters are, uh, like I said before, the closing, opening, uh, different uh, uh, environment uh, conditions. Is there an error? With, uh, with which um, force is the door being opened and all this um, data helps us uh, for the maintenance work. So with the help of the installed sensor technology and the drive in our doors and gates, we have the possibility to control our doors from outside at any time and to recognize their status. We have uh, various possibilities to display this. And for this, please, the next slide. All right, here we see uh, a little display uh, of the data. In this example, the force required by the drive to open the door is recorded. In this, in this graph, we can see immediately when a value rises above the speci uh, specified limit. If a deviation is detected here, we can react immediately and prevent a possible defect. Next slide, please. So here is an overview of various parameters that the door has when opened. In this example, again, the opening force in a Newton meter, motor power in ampere, opening speed in millimeter per second and uh, maximum opening width in millimeters are uh, being displayed. All these values result in an average for several openings. Again, if there is a large deviation, a message will be displayed and the issue is reviewed. Uh, next slide, please. Exactly here we uh, see the uh, environment conditions of the door. Here we record the temperature, the humidity, the pressure, and the vibration. And as already mentioned, one of our main reasons for digitization 
is the increased security that we can achieve as a result of all this data. Uh, I hope you can now imagine how safety in the tunnel will be increased by this by all this overview of data from the control center. Next slide, please. Yeah, based on the evalu evaluations, only the work that is really necessary will have to be carried out during maintenance. In other words, the data enable us to identify which doors need, require immediate, short or no maintenance at all. Uh, and on the, beta, uh, on the basis of the data that I uh, showed before, an optimum maintenance concept can be created. An example of this in, in the Gotthard tunnel, a six digit, six digit sum is invested for maintenance every year. And yeah, you can imagine significant savings can be made here through digitization. Yeah, uh, there's just one point, and unfortunately, right now, the total digital maintenance is not allowed as the laws and regulations require a maintenance with a person on site still. But even with today's regulation, we already have many possibilities for optimization. We are currently developing on a new maintenance concept. With the help of a QR code on the door, which uh, provides us with important information already during the construction phase, like the uh, tunnel logistics, and helps us with the, yeah, with the tunnel logistic. We have to, the possibility to store data directly on the door and to call it up during the maintenance work. So just a few examples. We are the QR code, the service mechanic could access the following data. Uh, for example, the maintenance instructions and maintenance protocol uh, suitable uh, for the door. Then he can access to parts list with spare parts. Those are available directly on site. So the service technician can compare the parts with his stock and order replaced parts uh, directly. So we have an automized process in that. He can also, uh, he has also access to various technical drawings relevant for the maintenance or information about the state of maintenance of the door. Uh, yeah, for example, the last maintenance, what work was done and what parts were replaced. This leads to an automatization of processes for the customer and also for ourselves. So in the future, we expect that the maintenance expense can be reduced considerably through this uh, digitization. So the advantages we have here in, in summary are the administrative work for maintenance is reduced to a minimum. The monitoring increases the security massively, which is a very important uh, point for us. And also the deviations and defects are detected immediately and a quick reaction is possible. Yeah, that's it for the uh, service and maintenance part for now. Okay. Let's so see thank, if there are any questions. Thank you very much. So that um, going back to to uh, my slides. Thank you very much, Yannick. Um, I want to yeah, go into the final words from my side, but maybe, um, and then we, then we have also time for your questions again, all right? So uh, two more things from my side. Maybe it's interesting to understand how Siemens and Elku here, uh, especially working together, how this works. So you can see there on the screen here, that is the real tunnel door, which is built into the tunnel digitalization center. And um, also on the second picture, there is a, a look behind the door. And there you can see it uh, here on, on the upper upper side, there is the C door drive, which is uh, uh, relevant for opening and closing those train door in this case here. And there you can see also some sensors attached to the door. Why is that important? We want to collect all the data, which is Yannick mentioned, to, to a cloud system and to do analysis. Yeah. So this is very important when you want to do something predictive. So 
we, in this case, we do have here shock sensors and also humidity sensors equipped to the tunnel here. And all this data going into this little box here um, for, for the technical guys here, we, uh, with CEDAR, we do have a Profinet, which is a very fast in, interface and bus system or Profibus. Um, possibility to exchange the data here, then this goes to um, an I.O. system, which could be a ED200 from Siemens, or maybe also a 7500 um, to, for the entire control process. And then those data goes to the tunnel control center, which is normally wins the CAOA. So, and uh, why I'm telling you this story, I want to make that very uh, feasible what we are doing there. This is not only showing a slide and, and saying, oh, we can do that. This is the concrete way how we are going to do that. So, and when the data is in the S7-1500, which is the main controller from Siemens, then we can upload those data into Mindsphere, which is a data uh, yeah, open IoT system, which uh, uh, we are offering from Siemens, but there are also other clouds. It doesn't matter. This is data host hosting, yeah? But no, no cloud with value add, and this is the, the main point here. What you can see there on the right screen, this is the data which is coming from the door or from fans. Yeah. So, and the good thing here is you can compare those motor data from different channels. So maybe you have, or in the, in the Gotthard tunnel, you have many, many of those doors equipped, right? But only if you have curves which are very normal for the motor system, then you are happy. And if you have yeah such peaks, this could mean that there is something wrong with the motor. You have an over voltage, you have uh, the, the bearing maybe make, make some problems, the, the motor is getting higher. All those are indicators that we have to do something with the motor. And then you can schedule um, um, yeah, uh, appointment with your technician that he has a look to the, the, the door system in this case. And this prevents you to have damage and unplanned downtime. So if, if the door is not really uh, safely open, then you have a real big problem. Yeah. So, and with this condition data, you, you can you know, uh, set also trigger points that if you go over this value, then we, uh, you are receiving an alarm to your control center. Yeah. So we don't have not so much time to go into each detail of the smart operator tool, but if you're interested, then uh, uh, download the latest webinar. There was a little deep dive to this session. But for me, it's important that you that the takeaway take message for you all is that we are working closely together with the 3D modeling, importing this, this to our systems showing this to the operator, then making the uh, simulation, then the engineering. And here we are working in the uh, Hagerbach Tunnel Digitalization Center very closely together. And this is a real value add, uh, what you can see there in our live presentations. Yeah. So, and that brings me uh, to the last point here, and then uh, it's time for your questions. Um, brand new and uh, uh, this will be released uh, in the next days. There will be a new address uh, for your, if you want to book or want to come to the Hagerbach, you are highly welcome. As I said, you can go to the tunneldigitalizationcenter.com. This site will be available, I think, in the next two days. And then there you can find all relevant information why you want to go to the, why it's uh, so useful or to visit the Hagerbach with your customers, or maybe you are a customer, what I, what I can expect there. So, and uh, first insights, then you can see the press releases and you can see the next events, yeah? So all those things, and you can see on the bottom how I can book or arrange a, a personal meeting in the Hagerbach Center, right? So, and this is the big uh, value add, what we are offering now, we have now a dedicated page where you can access, where you can inform yourself and also book your personal visit to the Hagerbach Digitalization Center. So that's it from my side. And um, I'm really happy that mostly of all people are still in the line. So we will use the latest, I, I think we will 
uh, yeah, take the next five to seven minutes for your question. I think this is very important to have a good conversation here. Um, I have some further questions. I can also show this on the screen here. Um, we have a question for Veronica again. So, for example, chat fans, positioning and then model updated with the detail fan dimensions. Also, example for, for chat fans, position and then yeah. the model updated with detailed fan dimensions. Is that so? The, the, the uh, 3D model is still updated with new information. I think it's the question. Yes, it's it's possible. Uh, I guess in the model that uh, you made in Unity, uh, you can see if the um, ventilator is working or not, uh, and there is uh, available sensor information uh, about the parameters that uh, enable or yeah, that uh, uh, that can uh, tell you if you can if you have to start the ventilator or not, meaning uh, meaning smoke detection and so on. Okay, I'm waiting. And so I'm not sure when you were finished. Let 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 me say, let me know when you're finished. All right, so not interrupting you. Sorry. Yes. So uh, the most important message is that yes, it's possible. Finished. So I'm finished. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just to make sure. So two more questions for you, I think. Last question for Veronica. Okay. Which LOD or load, I don't know how it's called, you are using for the asset management by BIM on Yaroop? A very interesting question. It depends on the client. Um, mm -hmm. It's very fancy, obviously, to see very detailed models. We are also able to do that, but it means a huge uh, amount of data. That is not necessarily needed to understand the, um, the structure itself. So it's also intelligent sometimes to make simplifications. So after a, a given uh, LOD, it doesn't make more sense to to make it even more detailed because what's important for us it's the information behind the metadata and not how it looks like so it's much more um, interesting is the level of information so uh, sometimes uh, a, a schematic model can also contains a but a lot of information. It has to be detailed enough to recognize the elements on the site. So that would be my message. Okay, for that good. Question. Thank you very much, Veronica. I think the last question is for Yannick and me. Yannick, is the digital model connected to the real infrastructure? If understood correctly, elements in the real world could be operated from the virtual model. Maybe you can start and I can add here in this yeah. case. Yeah, of course. So uh, there is a connection between the uh, control center and the doors. For example, uh, the door in, in the Hagerbach. Uh, I'm, right now I'm in my office and I, I will be able to control the door to open or close the door and check the status of the door from uh, right here. So there, there is a connection on the, there is the possibility to control the door from outside. Yes. Remote controls or something like that, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, and I can add here also something. Um, we don't have so much time today, but maybe uh, in another meeting, I can show you how uh, we can train or how we can benefit from, from a free, uh, 3D model. So there we can do virtual tests, virtual commissioning. Uh, in the in our systems and uh, so this is also so you can split this into two phases first of all the, the planning phase so there we can check uh, if we have for example a blockade uh, in, uh, in, the, in the door element so there we can see that the energy is going higher so there we have a problem with the door so you need to check this and all those uh, use cases we can simulate in the virtual world. So this is one thing 
what we can simulate before something is built. And the other thing is that what Yannick mentioned, that we can have a, a close or a remote connection to the door, sending up this data into the cloud, make the anal analytics here and uh, providing to the customer yeah, those data. And also that we are able to have a remote on and off uh, modus, which is also in some cases very, very helpful. Okay, so from from our side, um, it's uh, it's not on point. It's 12:03. I'm not sure from from which time zone you are calling, but in Germany, it's uh, three minutes after 12. So um, our presentations are done. I'm waiting for some last questions here, but I can't see at the moment further questions. I'm waiting for some seconds. I have 25 people on the line. Okay, then not overstress your time. So last words from my side, I'm very happy that you joined our webinar. I know at the moment there are so many webinars <laughs> out there that that's for sure. And that makes me very happy that you had joined and selected our webinar. Um, from the team, from Elkuch, from Amberg and I, we wanna say really thank you that you are part of this conversation here and we want to have this interaction and hopefully you are now uh, very, very interested to visit us with your customers or you uh, in our tunnel digitalization center. I showed you the address already on the, on this page here. This will be online, I think, in the, in the next two days. And then you can book and hopefully travel to Germany or to, to Switzerland in this case and uh, book your visit. Uh, in the Tunnel Digitalization Center. 